G'day, welcome back to this episode. Today, I'm gonna to, uh, continue on repairing this plenum, see if we can get this right-hand side done. Before I continue on cutting these extra two patch repairs, I'm going to start preparing this uh, to be welded on and I'll just give you a quick prime and then uh, yeah, make sure it dries so we can weld this first section on and then we can continue on the other patches. So in between these uh, repairs, I've been having a bit of a welding issue. I've been leaking gas out of this pipe. One thing you've got to look out for <clears throat> when you've uh, got this lying on the ground, the little gas um, pipe is quite sensitive. So you've got a bit of weight with the gas tank on the back. If the wheels run over this on the ground or if you step on it, um, it can pinch that gas pipe and you start having a leak and then all your gas regulation will be stuffed up. So unfortunately, uh, this is a sealed unit, so you can't really get in uh, and undo it from the, the unit itself. So I'm gonna, I've marked where I can hear it coming out. I'm just gonna make a little slice and see if I can expose it and then get some of this seal tape, silicon tape, which is quite durable, wrap it around it and see if I can just stem the leak and then get back into working again. Um, I also did run out of wire, so I was using gasless wire. Um, and then I've gone back and bought some 0.6, this is 0.8 and I've gone back and bought the 0.6 uh, mild steel wire. Um, in the process, I've lost my uh, 0.6 nozzle. So I'm gonna be using 0.6 on a 0.8 nozzle. I don't know if that's uh, gonna affect the welding or not. So we'll, we'll give it a crack. And, uh, but first we'll just uh, fix this leak and then get back into the, uh, the plenum chamber. All right, I've found this, uh, this leak, you can see there. It's got a flat spot, which has been rubbing. And you hear when I cover it, the regulator is, is uh, ticking. So that's been annoying the hell out of me. So it's important to have a proper um, seal on your gas line. So um, for peace of mind, don't stretch it or rub it too much or coil it up too much when you're using it because it could sever that gas pipe, gas line. So I really need, I really need to Im <coughs> replace this whole unit. But uh, for now, because I'm in the middle of nowhere, um, I'm just gonna use some silicon tape to tape this up. It's quite durable tape and hopefully that stems a leak and gets me through back to, to repairs. Okay, so I taped that up uh, with the silicon tape. So I might just do a, a, a little layer, one layer of gaffer tape just to make sure that it doesn't rub any further, uh, but that seems to have done it. There's no gas leaking at all anymore. And that's with the gas on. So let's move on. Okay, so I've taped that up with the silicon tape and then I've run over it with some gaffer tape just to protect the silicon <coughs> from rubbing and, and uh, potentially uh, breaking. So that's a chemical bond underneath which will just hold it in place, protect it, and then this will just protect it even further. It doesn't look pretty, but uh, who cares? It, it's functional, so let's get back into it. Okay, so I've deoxed the sections there, deoxed the patches and sprayed them with the zinc spray. Now I'm just waiting for the deoxid to give it about 15 minutes to kill anything that's there. Then I'll uh, wipe it off with some metho and water and then spray the zinc on that. And while that's happening and, and drying, I'm gonna start to making this patch here which is uh, part of that dish for the heater duct and also a section that goes up to that, um, that bottom layered patch, which I'm uh, currently painting and zinking out the back there. Um, 
so yeah, it's a bit more complicated. It's sort of a, a dished, sort of round, curved area, and then another little section here. So I could probably break it up uh, into two patches, but I'll I'll see how I go doing it in one, and um, we'll go from there. Okay, just a quick one. Um, one of the comments I got on YouTube when I was um, fixing that panel for the heater duct, uh, it had a little gutter or a little lip on it, which is quite hard in a uh, circular uh, pattern to try and get up with a um, pair of pliers. So someone commented, they said, if you uh, grind a little notch into a bolt, um, and then you can use that as a lever to, uh, you know, to the height of where you'd want the uh, lip to be, you can use that as a little lever to then lever up the uh, the sheet metal and create that lip uh, a lot easier than using the pliers. So instead of having a bolt, I just used a, uh, a piece of um, steel rod and I just notched it into the distance and the height that I want that gutter. And now I'll um, just go up to it and lever it up and that should uh, create that little lip for me. So yeah, I can't remember who they were, but uh, thanks for the tip. Cheers. Okay, so I've just uh, done a test fit on this uh, section here. Yeah, some pretty big gaps there. However, it's as good as I'm gonna get it, so I'm just gonna try and weld it in and uh, get that happening. All right, so uh, it's come time to um, mold this section here. I've been watching a few fabrication channels and trying to hone in my technique to make it a little bit more refined and neater. And I noticed a lot of the, uh, the professional fabrication guys make up jigs made out of timber. Uh, and then they sort of use the timber as the mold to then hammer in the, the metal against it to get you know complicated curves and you know circular shapes and things like that so it sort of got me thinking you know that that's my sort of template flat template of that um what could i use around here that I, you know it's going to be reasonably quick that would help me get that curve without having to try and guess it so found uh this which is actually perfect um circular shape for this for the curve that i require um so yeah if i line these two up put this one over here like that and then put this in here then basically I can slip this one out and then use the hammer to fold that uh, that template over and try and get that complicated curve going and then that will allow me to then start on the rest so I'm going to give that a go I think that could be quite effective Um, I've shaped this panel to pretty much 90% where I want it. Uh, it's probably, so you can see <clears throat> it's, uh, it's pretty close to the original, um, given that I wasn't giving, it didn't have any reference points there. Um, I've had a look at the other side and it sort of tends to slope up there, goes up a fair bit there and then curves down. So I'm in the process of uh, fitting that, but uh, in order to fit this in correctly, 
I need to make sure that this is the same level as the other side because when I it's under tension, so when I cut it, it did drop about a centimeter. So in order to um, get the right height, I just place this uh, on the uh, chamber on the other side, uh, at roughly 90 degrees, um, and then marked it. And then I brought it over here, and you can see from that um, dark mark there that it's the height that it should be. So it's roughly a centimeter, drop a centimeter. So I can bring that up. Um, what I'll do is I'll weld a little piece of uh, metal bridge here just to make sure that it stays there. Um, and then once it's stayed there, I'll cut that back off and when I'll finish, when I'll fit this piece in. So yeah, um, I will basically, yeah, I'll start to uh, cut that little bridge piece out now, weld that, and then that way I know exactly where the right height is to fit this piece. Okay, so I've got this uh, section fit here. Um, put the little plug holes in there, ready for welding. That zinc primer um, underneath. I've uh, since found out that that's the uh, weld through primer. I was always wondering what that was. So yeah, it's 98.5% uh, zinc. Silver zinc uh, with 98.5% zinc purity, which means when you weld, it'll liquefy and uh, fill in the weld hole and uh, you don't have to buff it back to the bare metal to weld, which is good because that way it will retain uh, its um, protection from rust and stuff underneath those, uh, those joints here when you weld it. So yeah, that's definitely what I'll be using from now on. So anyway, I've got this, uh, this panel um, fitted just with a little clamp. It's not fitted here, but what I'll do is it's impossible to try and get that um, adjusted when you don't have it in place. So I'm pretty happy with this join here with the lip going around that still looks relatively symmetrical as far as the circle goes so yeah i'm just going to start uh, welding it along here and then plug weld this and then that way i've got a firm hold and then um, i've bridged it here so that's raised at the same level like this so that's that's all that's all fine um yeah, so I really just need to uh, to start welding it up, and then once I've got it firm, I can then adjust this angle here and bend it up to uh, to join this section. I guess you're all getting sick of this uh, angle at the moment, but uh, yeah, unfortunately, this is the only way I can film it. So I have uh, finally got that section on that complicated bit and it's fit beautifully. So um, the, uh, the circles held shape pretty well. Got the lip around, right around there. Um, I've got a ton of weld there because I had to sort of bridge a lot of the gap which was going on. But yeah, I managed to do that in one piece. So yeah, molded it right around there and then folded it and did this little section here got this little section here which the uh the cow panel will be sitting on got to grind all these welds back but it's probably not as accurate as the other one um this i'll be playing around with once i actually get the cow panel um you can see on the other side there is a gap there uh between those two sections and this sort of comes down at an angle and this is sort of 90 degrees um but you know, you can always tweak those things um, once you start fitting that other panel. So it's pretty, it's within a couple of mil of the other one anyway. Um, so I'm not overly worried. I've got this one last section to go now, which is this little bridge piece, um, which I'm gonna template up now. And then once that's done, that uh, passenger side plenum chamber is done. So pretty happy with it. Um, yeah, so I'll just start templating that up now and um, yeah, try and finish it off.
All right, so I'm finished. Um, yeah, just bridged, bridged that section there. Uh, just measured the, uh, the height so it was spot on. And yeah, I mean, it's a little bit rough, but uh, pretty much um, lines up with everything. I've just ground a few of those welds off and um, they're not perfect, but I'm going to uh, potentially revisit it and um, yeah, go to seam seal it and things like that and go, go check. I'm running out of lights. So I'm going to come back and check for um, uh, pinholes next week. But yeah, um, it's pretty good. Not as good as a, uh, a original plenum chamber, you know, would be, but uh, considering I just saved myself 580 bucks, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, yeah, so you're never going to see it. it. Sort of runs runs around here, welded, bridged up. This is all one section here, which rolls nicely into the original panel. Then I've pinched the lips right around for that circle for the heat event. Um, just put a bit of zinc spray on it just to protect it while I go away. This little section here um, still needs to be ground off, but this is going to hold the cow panel and the cow panel actually rests on that as well. Um, but I'll be tweaking that when I get the panel because it, I'm, I'm assuming it's not right. It's, uh, it certainly won't be accurate until I can uh, get it on there and start measuring it up. But anyway, that's it. Uh, the passenger side done. And next I'm going to move over to the other side there, which is, um, not as bad, but uh, still a lot of work, so. <sighs> yeah, finished. Thank God for that. All right, so that's it for this episode. Uh, as I said, managed to get the, uh, the passenger side done. It's been around two, two or three weeks all up. Uh, broke it up to sections. Pretty happy with the uh, end results. Said saved $580, so it's worth uh, flapping around with it. So moving on to the next side. Um, I know I've been mentioning that I'm moving uh, for quite a while now, but uh, this will be the last probably the last episode I do in this shed. So the next time I uh, see you guys will be when I'm in the new shed. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a, an a intro for that, uh, for that property in that shed and, um, and actually transporting this as well. So I've got to put this on a, uh, on a trailer. Everything you see behind me is gonna go in that trailer. Um, and I've got to haul it up to uh, the new property. So pretty excited. Can't wait to, um, to be in a shed that I don't have to drive two hours to uh to come work on the car and uh once i get the uh the body there gonna buy the rotisserie in the next couple of weeks and then body off um full body off job so yeah i'm gonna uh, i'm looking forward to uh to seeing what's underneath and um yeah getting the chassis out and cleaning it up and painting that so i reckon it's going to start uh, to speed up um in the next month and then uh, i can slowly get onto the engine and that's where the uh the real funnel begins so anyway if you liked the episode, give us a thumbs up and I'll see you next time.